Hello, McFluffy52 here, back with some more Magic the Gathering action, and today I want to show you how you can win with a deck that has a mana curve that looks like this. Today we're playing a glorious, greedy, green and blue pile using the commander Emoti Celebrant of Bounty. It is a 5 mana 3 1 with Cascade that says spells you cast with mana value 6 or greater have Cascade. And that explains why our deck looks like this, because we can cascade with every single spell that we play. Now to go with Emoti, we're also playing Karuga, the Macro Sage, which fits amazingly with this deck because its restriction here is playing cards with mana value 3 or greater. And then when Karuga, the Macro Sage, enters the battlefield, you draw a card for each permanent you control with mana value 3 or greater. Now, I don't think we're going to be playing Karuga the Macro Sage a whole ton here. I rarely play it, but it is a nice card to always have in your back pocket. Now, another reason why our deck looks like this is because the way Cascade works. Cascade says, when you cast this spell, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost if its mana value is less than this spell. So with this in mind, if we build a deck with cards that all have mana value above one particular card, we know we will cascade into it eventually. And that is why we only have a few cards here that actually cost less than six or seven mana. These cards exist in the deck because they can ramp us whenever we cast a Modi between Druid of the Emerald Grove Eryxmethes, and Solemn Simulacrum, whenever we cast Emoti, we're going to cascade into one of these. And then whenever we cascade out of a six mana spell, we'll know we'll cascade into Time Warp, Nissa, who shakes the world, or Mind's Eye. Knowing that we're guaranteed to cascade into one of these cards whenever we cast Emoti means that we know that we'll be able to recast it if our opponent removes it. And then knowing that we're going to cascade into one of these big spells whenever we cascade from a six mana spell can be very helpful because Time Warp can completely leapfrog us ahead of our opponent and win the game. Nissa Who Shakes the World will double up a ton of our mana and allow us to untap a land to continue going. And Mind's Eye is good because it can help us draw cards with all our excess mana. Now all our other cards aren't restricted to giving us value at higher mana cost, such as Spring to Mind, which can actually be played for three mana. Now if we keep this in mind and rearrange the deck, it's going to look something like this. Now this is our mana curve if you account for all the different ways we can use the card. So you have one mana, two mana, three mana, four mana, five mana, and then these cards are special because they have other ways of discounting them. So they don't fit particularly well in any column, but they can be cast for less than their actual mana cost. In this deck, we make use of various abilities here to cast spells at discounts. Those abilities include cycling, adventure, channel, prototype, optional costs from Strixhaven, and lastly, emerge. Icebreaker Kraken also gets a discount for each snow land you play, making it a 12 drop that you can play for only two mana. Now we have a bunch of other fun payoffs here to go along with our expensive cheap cards, which you'll have to see in the video. All right, all right, let's see how we can do. First match, we're matched up against Calyx, Guided by Fate. That's a new card. It's pretty strong in Standard. Or it's been making waves in Standard, at least. I've seen a lot of uh, videos about it. I think this hand is actually quite good because we can cycle, find lands. We can give like a land here. We have action on two, action on three, action on four, action on five. So, things are looking good. That is a good card for our opponent. It's going to be able to generate them a ton of mana here, but I think we're going to go ahead and just grab an island. So we can go ahead and Beanstalk Giant and keep on ramping. Now, that's not a great card to draw into there. We don't want to be drawing into our four drops because we're much happier cascading into them off of our emoti. But um, we'll have to do. I think to be safe, we're going to play Eryxmethes and pass turn, and then we can cascade off of Emoti and ramp a bit more and then 
Then we get to take over the game. Oh no. That's uh that's gonna be game. Because they're gonna be able to make double the tokens with paralyzed. That is a strong start from our opponent here. And then they're gonna be able to generate a ton of parallel lives and annoyed and perfect. Oh my goodness. Uh we might as well stop while we're ahead. <laughs> Uh, what is our best option here? Well, obviously playing a land's a pretty good, pretty good move here. We'll cast a Modi. We'll cascade. Solemn Simulacrum, that is about as good as it could get because we can now block Calyx with a Solemn Simulacrum. Though I imagine our opponent's going to be imprisoning our poor old Emoti. We can return a creature to its owner's hand, so we will be able to bounce this or block. This is nightmare. Oh, they bounced the, or they're taking the Solemn. Yeah, I think we're just gonna lose. All right, I have not played a uh, historic brawl in a couple weeks and uh, maybe a Modi has been shuffled around in the matchmaking, but also that was that was just a really good start for our opponent there. Uh, Korvald, that, as far as I'm aware, is a very good commander. All right. Lanamar Elves start, that's... Honestly, I don't know if you could ask for a better start. We're going to go ahead and just play out the Quandrix Campus. May have been nice to like cycle the Greater Sandworm here, but we're going to need to play the tap land eventually if we want to reach this Moti. We need the land in the next like two draws. We can cycle whenever, I think. So we can actually wait until our opponent's turn here. hold up stuff so that they're less tempted to play something maybe all right well don't think we uh we stopped much there <laughs> all right we can get a modi down next turn so we have Successfully set up This deck is pretty crazy if we can get a Modi down and it to stick the thing is we need our opponent not to be too aggro and our opponent to have a Limited number of answers this deck can deal with answers because of the way the cascade works with a Modi is we're gonna be ramping whenever we play a Modi so we can pay for the commander attack quite well and we're getting things whenever we cast it, but we do need it to survive at least one turn uh, from passing, <laughs> usually. I have won games where we have uh, played a Modi and then played something else. That's possible. We just gotta... Ooh, that is... That's not a great draw. That would have been one thing to cascade into off of Moti. One could have two mana open here to counterspell, but I don't think so. We know we're getting a Rixmith these because there's our other, our only other four drop here. So when we cast a Moti next turn, we're not getting anything. But now we have seven mana at our disposal. So opponent's gonna have a tough time stopping us from here. 
We can draw cards with overflowing insight. We could play out a Zopandrel and double up our creatures, which could get crazy. Uh, so the world is our oyster at this point. If a Modi survives, Bolas is Citadel. That's gonna gonna be a tough one. They get to play cards off of their top of their library by paying life instead of mana. They don't play anything. Okay, so that is a really good sign for us to just go wild. Can we play the full cost here? No, we cannot. All right. Well, this seems like a pretty good thing to do. Go ahead, cascade off of this, but we also get to destroy our opponent's Bolus's Citadel, which is why we're playing it. Wallbreaker, why don't you cast it? Destroy. Hexproof from blue and black. Well, this is Devoid. We get Boon of the Wishgiver, which we cascade it into. And since we're casting it with a cascade, we get to cascade off of it. And we get Mind's Eye. Not bad. Go ahead, remove slumber counters from Rixmases. Starts with five counters. We're gonna be, well, whenever we play, uh, cast the card here, we get to take a counter off of it. So it's very easy to go ahead and get Rixmases going as a 12 12. Got to go ahead and discard cards. That's usually a good sign, right? Page Sun means we can double up our mana, which is one of my favorite things to do. It's the original way I built this deck is uh, playing. Mm. Does this one have flash? It does. So we might actually No, we don't have any blue mana open. But uh. Emerge, I forgot to talk about this. Emerge says you may cast this spell by sacrificing a creature and paying the emerge cost, or paying the emerge cost reduced by that creature's mana value. So this basically becomes cheaper by the amount of the sacrificed creature. Cast with emerge, we're gonna go ahead and emerge. We don't really need world breaker here. We're good. Wait, what does this say? How does merge work? Oh, we're emerging it off of two creatures, which doesn't make sense. So we'll just emerge it off this and pay accordingly. All right, we get free massive thing. Probably should play Cade's Sun, but Seagate so Restoration. Sure, why not draw cards equal to the size of our hand? Cascade Nissa, not bad. That can untap something. Take action. Take action. Roll a bunch of cards. Roll a card. Wow, we can actually play the world spell here. That's uh, that's pretty big. I think what I might go ahead and do is uh. Oh my, this is this is tough. All right, uh, everything gets, what does this give? Emerge, when you cast a spell, creatures you control gain plus two and plus two and trample and haste or trample until end of turn, this is trample and haste. So we can cast this out, but I think to do that, we're gonna go ahead, untap this. So we have even more mana and then we're gonna try and deal with our opponent here, I think. There's just so much option, there's so many options. Actually, no, I know exactly what we're going to be doing. Oh, also we get a free cascade, so. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's game. We get another free turn and, uh, but yeah, we were going to win that game in the most glorious fashion I could figure out. We're going to be playing down or putting into the battlefield using the world spell, put two non saga tournament cards from your hand onto the battlefield. We would be playing the Pandrel, which says at the beginning of your combat, Double the power and toughness of each creature you control until end of turn. And putting also Decimator of Provinces, which is a 10 drop, 7-7, seven, seven, Trample Haste. When you cast a spell, creatures you control get plus two, plus two, gain trample until end of turn. We would have had this enter the battlefield. Everything would get pumped and trample. 
and then they would get doubled up by the Sapendral, so we would just swing in for a absolutely massive lethal damage. All right, all right, we're against Tamio Field Researcher. This is a bad matchup, bro, so it's gonna be rough. Tamio Field Researcher, if it sticks onto the battlefield for a couple turns, they just get to cast spells for free because, uh, well, they play it on turn four, they tick it up, and then they tick it up the next turn, and then the next turn, and then they minus it. So uh, turn seven, they get to do their thing. We're also a turn seven deck, but uh, cast spells with... <laughs> From your hand without paying their mana cost is pretty ridiculous this hand i think we'll go ahead and try and keep it i was gonna say it was kind of awkward i went to i talked about this deck what, what was it last week uh sometime i think it was at the beginning of last week i mentioned uh i wanted to share my favorite historic brawl deck as part of uh like celebrating hitting 400 subscribers and uh so I, I've been planning to record a video about this deck, but uh, the funniest thing was I noticed the. Uh, we're gonna actually cycle this. Don't know why we're doing it in response. Just felt like it was the natural thing to do. Uh, but the funniest thing is, actually, we'll put Karuga in hand. Man, I cannot. I can't play and talk at the same time sometimes. But uh, LVD or Legend VD, a very awesome magic youtuber one of my favorites uh, and is actually one of the reasons i like really got into uh magic arena and one of the reasons why or uh that i was interested in making content myself so huge inspiration of mine also released a video on emoti as a historic brawl commander today um so yeah I, I saw that when I went to go and record this and I was like, oh no. I think our decks are very different and also it, their deck is uh, probably more competitive than mine, but I I just I just love casting or like the idea of having the worst mana curve imaginable. <laughs> All right, uh, we could play Coma. Okay, this is so lame, but I think it's got to be done. Koma can't be countered. And Koma is an amazing Swiss Army Knife that just kind of takes over the game. At the beginning of each upkeep, your opponents and yours, you get to create a blue serpent creature token named Koma's Coil. Yeah, we don't need to know about that card anymore. Uh, what card? Oh, we're just going to lose here. All right, well, we'll let our opponent go off here some. They get to proliferate. They get to minus Tamio. Oh, my goodness. Ugh, I guess I should have played a Modi. Though, they probably would have won this turn anyways. Opponent has free spells now. If they minus their Tamiya, they got free spells. I don't, you don't know why they're proliferating a bunch without um, taking down Tamiya. Perhaps they don't have the win in hand. I should have brought more parchment. Because they could have drew into something else with counters that would have helped. What? At last, opponent. Yeah, that is where I scoop. Because that is going to go ahead and start exiling things after they proliferate five more times. All right, all right. Karumonix. Or, yeah, Karumonix. That is a fun commander. I was going to say, Historic Ball is such a weird format to me because it is a. Uh, I think this is an okay hand. Three lands and something to draw more cards to hopefully find. Uh, hopefully find another land so we can hit our fourth land drop or so on. That is, uh, that's scary. Rats are not to be messed around with. Rat colony. 
They get plus one for each other rat you control. Good cycle boon of the wish giver. That is helpful. I think <laughs> this is an ETB trigger, so it's not great bouncing the uh, carbonic. That is impressive, though, that our opponent managed to miss so many creatures. Commit to memory. That's not a bad card. You can also bounce something here. Go ahead and bounce our opponent's rat colony just to slow them down some. A little bit of early game and interaction. Oh, wow. Opponent's got that rat draw. I have not faced any rat deck. So this is uh this is spooky but we can return a permanent to the top of their library so that's something This one seems the least relevant of all of them. Hopefully top back into a land. Otherwise we are in hot water. But yeah, Historic Brawl is such a weird format. There's a lot of, uh, you know, matchups and then uh, just scooping. <laughs> all right. No land. Go ahead, cycle this, see what we draw into. All right, all right. I will say, I recall having an overly whelming, over, overwhelmingly, why can't I English? I, I don't know. Um, having an overwhelmingly positive win rate with this deck, but um, we're not having a ton of luck here. Opponent, opponents have been a bit fast. Our draws have been a bit bad. Um, and we've only played like three games. So. <laughs> okay. These draws are pretty, uh, pretty questionable at this point. I will say. That's terrifying. Semblance anvil means they're going to be able to discount things dramatically. The nice thing is since we can search for a forest, it doesn't specify. We can actually search for a forest island dual land but yeah when they exile a non-land card from their hand they get two mana discount if that card shares a card type so now they exiled an artifact they get a two mana discount on all their artifacts so they can play out karn here you can see for three mana if you look at the screen five mana if you hover it but it's you can see cost modified to three Why not? Let's just go full discard. <laughs> Get rid of this Praetor and this Praetor. On Legacy Reforged, that is terrifying. Well. Okay, okay. I would like to say that before the last game, I looked at the match history with my de with this deck. And I was 14 and 7 with a 66% win rate. So I'm just feeling not so great about what's going on right now because it just it it uh, <laughs> it feels unlucky. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, it it's it's a bad deck, yada yada, whatever. All right, well, this hand's awful. We have multiple four drops. We don't want to be drawing into so many of them. We want them at least at the library so we get extra value when we cast a Modi. We prefer to have our cheaper cards that still give value. I think we're just going to lose to this Atali because they take any card off the top of their our library and it's amazing. We have a seven average mana value. So.
Root of the Emerald Grove is a very interesting card because we have a chance to put these cards onto the battlefield and put both of them onto the battlefield. Root of the Emerald Grove is sort of like a 2-2 with Cultivate stacked on it, which is pretty good. Managed to slow down our opponent here by bouncing one of their creatures. Opponent having a bad draw here. Giving it a plus one counter. Interesting. Go ahead, cast our emoji, Cascade. Go ahead, ramp. And then next turn, we should be able to cast Boring Clex Voice of Hunger, which should uh, kind of shut our opponent out of the game for a little bit. Boring Clex Voice of Hunger, 7 6 Trample, 8 mana. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add 1 mana of that any type that land produce. Whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, that land doesn't untap for the controller's next untap step. So this is an incredibly awesome and toxic card. Opponent has Escape into the Wilds, or Escape to the Wilds, is to play down 2 lands, exiling top five cards of their library I remember this card uh seeing it played in videos i never i wasn't playing when eldraine was available unfortunately for me we might actually play the crack in here because i'm a little bit worried of how things are going to go out but we'll go ahead and just play this seems worth it pretty crazy if we can get it to uh stick Tanuki, we get a cascade off of that. We have a chance to cascade it into my favorite spell. And we cascade into it. That should be game. Unless our opponent has like counter spells and removal. We'll go ahead and take action, remove a counter, take action, remove a counter, take action, remove a counter. And uh, why not swing in? Because we got another turn of great stuff to go. All right. Now, we'll go ahead and play out this land. No, opponent. You're just about to miss having us having quick mass. 15 mana and casting two 7 drops that both cascade into a 6 drop. Oh my, oh my. Emoti Celebrant of Bounty versus Emoti Celebrant of Bounty. Now, who's going to win this showdown? Is it going to... I guess it's me. Okay, okay. First Sliver. I haven't actually versed this deck before, but uh, as far as I understand, quite strong. Because, well, Cascading is amazing. And, uh, well, it says Cascade. They also are playing Karuga. I love it beautiful game beautiful game this is the greediest keep you could imagine wait this entire deck is a greedy keep <laughs> opponent is building out their colors here kind of spooky We have another cycling here with Lake Claim. Hopefully we find into a four drop. We don't find any four drop. Why not pick up Karuga? I don't think we have to discard. We do have to discard. That's a little awkward. An island can go. We are closer to casting our our commander than our opponent is thanks to our i'm gonna say card draw play out a modi here we can ramp with a modi which is huge we get a rick Smithies, which is probably the worst of the cards for us to hit if the other ones found if we found one of the other four drops that could find a forest it would work better with our nissa here but we still have a eight mana going into this, so we can go ahead and draw with or cascade off of Voice of Hunger here. 
opponent, do you have removal for a moti? They do not have removal for a moti. Oh, I love that. Mind's desire. Beauty. Well, we're going to play an 8 drop that doubles up our mana and cast a 7 drop that finds us 4 lands. And then we're going to cascade off that and cast a extra turn spell. And uh, yeah, that's that's got to be game, right? We are going to go ahead and find all forest here. Why is the clicking not working? Game is starting to break. And our opponent concedes. <laughs> oh man, uh, I gotta find an opponent that actually sticks in for one of these. All right, this is actually a pretty good hand here. Ignore the fact that time warps in our hand, so we have to physically cast it, which is kind of gross. But we have uh, Greater Tanuki, which is like an instant snap keep for me. Any of these three mana channel ramp cards are just great because they kind of guarantee you climbing up that ladder a little bit more than uh, a lot of other cards do. That's a little awkward that I played it this turn. Well, no, it doesn't matter because this is always going to come in tap. Forbidden Friendship. Are we a tokens deck? Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Of course they're a tokens deck. They're playing Brutaclad. What is wrong with me? This is another reason why I always search up Forest is because we have Nyssa, the Planeswalker in the deck. So if you can cascade into Nyssa, which is a five drop, so a lot of our six drops will cascade into a Time Warp or Nyssa or the Mind's Eye. Honestly, might want to cut Mind's Eye from the deck, but it's just pretty good. So. Opponent has a counter spell here. They counter the ability interesting well if we can cast our gods fairs that's you we should be okay opponent what do you have off of this doctors that seems good to me no blocks we're not gonna lose our emoji we still have a lot of life here idle tear now that's awkward we're gonna go ahead time warp here just need another draw very awkward though uh, that's also incredibly awkward. Well, this is about as awkward as a, uh, a Modi turn could get, but, uh, <laughs> I guess we're going to get some cards in hand. That is the worst time warp we could have had, but if this emoji sticks around for another turn, which it has a chance, our opponent has been playing tokens and has been very focused on their strategy, which is understandable. Uh, because if they play this Brutal Cloud and turn everything into 8-8s, eight we're, <laughs> we're never going to have That is scary. All right, what is the best thing we could play here? Hmm. Well, a seven drop is probably our best bet. Let's actually play out this gain like a bunch of life and see what happens. Oh, our other extra turn spell. That's brilliant. All right. Target player draws or gains an extra turn and we get to put their brood clad to their to their hand. I forgot about this extra turn spell. Oh, these extra turn spells take this deck from like a fair, just big nonsense deck to winning out of nowhere, which is if you want to power down the deck, I would remove the extra turn spells. Would have been awesome if we casted Jinga Taxius beforehand, but uh, fair enough. Hmm, what is the appropriate plan here? Ooh, this is very fun. What we can do here is maybe cast this. This is a seven drop. Cast it with the emerge cost, sacrificing solemn simulacrum. Except cascade. We get to cascade into something big. Okay, it's a six five. It's at least something. It cascades though into mind's eye. 
into our rake smithies. I forgot we had another four drop. Almost out of our four drops here. We cast this, we draw a card. We get to draw a card off of this. That enters the battlefield. Well, what can we cast off of that? Well, we can cast this. This is why the emerge is so awesome. Go ahead, play this out. Gives our creatures plus two, plus two, and trample, but it also is a 10 mana cascade. Okay, well, we cascade into about the worst thing you could imagine. Uh, we can take a point off of that. Why not? This goes there. This goes here. And uh, we're still alive. Our opponent is also still alive. But we get to draw a bunch of cards because our opponent's going to be drawing cards. This is why Mind's Eye can be a really strong card. Maybe not the best pick for such a heavily... That is very fair. Our opponent had the Brutic Lad. They could have potentially gotten the Ominous Seas going off, but next turn we would have probably laid waste to their entire battlefield with Cityscape Leveler and Portal to Phyrexia. Also, we had Jinga Taxia, so we could even cast that, and that would counter the Brutic Cloud when it gets cast, which is kind of crazy. All right, all right. Amodi versus Ing Igna and Nasika. We've started to see in these games how if we get to stick our cards to stick, we can actually do quite a lot of damage to our opponents. I don't know if this is a great matchup for us because Igna and Sika is going to be a lot about spamming creatures and we don't have great answers to a ton of creatures, but we will see. Wow, we are uh, top decking into all of our tap lands, but at least they're dual lands, so we won't have any concerns about casting things. Kasima. It's actually quite a cool card. Primal Empathy. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card if you control a creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield. Otherwise, put a plus one counter. Okay. That is all right with me. We're going to go ahead for a cycle so we can guaranteed hit a land. And we will have enough lands in hand to curve out to our Emoti. Which is kind of the goal. Proliferate. Aha, so they're going for that first. That is fair. All right, we're going to actually hold up Mirror Shell Crab here. And you're going to be saying Mirror Shell Crab? What does it do? Well, we can counter target spell or ability unless its controller pays three. So if our opponent goes ahead, activate something. Well, we can't. That's not really counterable because our opponent has a hand full of mana. But if they go ahead and play something else here, we can... Mere shell crab. Nobody expects the crab. Especially not from a moti. All right, now we get to cast the moti. We get to cascade into some more ramp, which is nice. Druid, probably the worst one to cascade into at this particular moment because I don't want to accidentally put two lands into my hand and start having to discard, but it'll be all right. Oh my goodness, we were one off from putting both of the lands onto the battlefield. Would have been amazing. We now have access to seven mana our next turn, so we can actually lay claim their Kasimina. Or we can actually lay claim their commander, which is even more brutal. We could flash in Drownyard Behemoth for a massive Cascade trigger. We could also just play Titan of Industry. I think I'm going to take that Titan or uh, Jin. I'm a big fan of that Jin. Or, yeah, we're going to take the Jin. I think we will take the Jin. Wait a minute. 
Wait a minute, that's actually so brutal. I am so sorry, opponent. I don't even mean to be this rude. Actually, I kind of do because I don't want to lose. Actually, I'm kind of dumb, but it happens. Kind of forgot the whole thing where Jin can. <laughs> oh my goodness, we are so done. Oh. See, I'm too busy thinking of stupid stuff to say that I uh, forget how the game functions. Well, <laughs> one's going to go search up their triple turn spell. No, they don't go for the minus eight. There's an instant or sorcery card that shares a color with a planeswalker. Exile this card, shuffle, and then you may cast a card without paying its mana cost. Why did you not just search up a extra turn spell with Kazmina and then get two extra turns with Jin. I'm kind of confused here. Maybe our opponent has some strategy that I'm not aware of, but uh, I thought I was about gone, though. I thought it was over. That river's rebuke would have done amazing damage, though, if it resolved. Just think about it. It would have been awesome. <laughs> okay. Do we have 10 mana? We will have 10 mana. No, we won't. We will have 10 mana. So we will actually be able to exile their Jin and their Kazmina with a Ulamog here. I think we might go ahead and do that just so that we can uh, get rid of this, get rid of the Jin. None of this weird. That is the worst possible cascade you can imagine. Well. Oh, that's that's a decent place to be. Ulamog resolved. Opponent's biggest threats removed. Vorin clicks that they can flip is a little terrifying, but uh, nothing a little Titan of Industry maybe can't handle. Titan of Industry can blow up the Saga if they choose to flip this Vorin Klex into a Saga, but they might have enough proliferate to go through the Saga. Their opponent does seem to be running some kind of counter synergy here. So proliferating is an option. So it looks like they might just be going to uh, uh, opponent. I don't think that's going to be uh, okay with me. I think we might have to take that. Okay, we might just have to win the game here. Oh, wait, yeah. They can't copy the Ulamog. Because if they copy the Ulamog... Uh... It doesn't work. Alright, so we just need to get rid of their Ulamog. Easier said than done. Just kidding. We get this, which isn't going to get countered. I think. I think we get to play this. Target a permanent. That permanent becomes ours. Cascade, what's that? We get a free Tanuki. What's that? This cascades into <clears throat> drum roll, please. An extra turn spell? No, a solemn. Well, we'll take an extra land, not bad. Thank you for that opponent. And then we're going to get one more cascade off choosing to sacrifice. Ooh, I guess we have to sacrifice our Ulama. <laughs> Wait, hold on. All right, well, we'll go ahead, maybe attack in with our big things. You know, the responsible things to do here. Make our opponent block because they need to at least block one of these. And then one more cascade aid trigger for the road. Please hit the extra turn spell. Tile tear, not terrible. Uh, Nissa could be worse. The tide 
Well, we'll go ahead and untap one of these lands and uh, get ourselves our Karuga. Karuga, when it enters the battlefield, is going to draw us like three or four cards. Our opponent here does not have the tallest creature, so they're going to get to put a bunch of plus one counters all around the board. That is fine with us. Opponent is going to have to deal with our board, though, or our Modi. Oh my goodness. I do love our opponent's deck. It's kind of a Simic silly pile, and I respect it. They have to put cards from the among the milled creatures, so they put Averbrook Caretaker and Zapandro. All right, we're going to need some big dudes to deal with this. We have a ton of mana and a ton of ways to draw cards at the moment here, though, so we are in a good spot. Oh, we find our own Zapandrel. That's that's not bad. I'll say that's pretty good. Uh, tap this, tap this, tap this, tap this, tap this, tap this. Go ahead, play out a Titan of Industry. Cascade. Maybe we cascade into our extra turn spell. <clears throat> Anytime now, game. Anytime. Okay, we'll get a Garden Pharaoh statue. Not bad. Uh, uh, there we go. Extra turn spell. And uh, that usually leads to concede. And then if that's not enough damage, we'll go ahead and do this. Now that we have a ton of permanents that are worth a lot of mana, we'll go ahead and play out this. And draw how many cards from a Kruger's trigger? Oh no, that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah. All right, well, I was gonna wait past the turn and then just go ahead and attack in to finish off our opponents. Probably just haste in that Cragfoot. Oh wait, it would have cascaded a bunch more times. Anyways, I was going to just pass the turn and then go attack in when we don't have something sickness. All right, the next two games did not go so well. The first match we reversed a first sliver deck and we just failed to draw into more than three lands. Our opponent got the first sliver down and played another sliver, which cascaded into like three slivers. And then, well, I guess you can guess what's going to happen next. They're all going to come down on the board and uh, well, uh, yeah, they, they bump each other. So they come in and beat our face. And uh, that is how that goes. We're hoping for a nice land draw next turn. But uh, let's see what we get. Oh. Yeah. So that's basically what happened with that match. The next match we versed against Captain Everhart, which is kind of like White Weenie's deck. I don't know. Uh, but uh, we basically ran into a very similar issue is we just did not draw more than three lands our opponent kind of curved out i guess um and so yeah we kind of just drew into a bunch of six drops and drew into no more lands even though we got like a few cycles in there you can see discarding card and yeah that is basically how these two matches went pumping up beating our face and it basically left me asking uh the question of how hard is it to draw some lands? Okay, okay, this hand is amazing. We have five lands in hand. That is just what we want to see. We just need lands because we've only lost the... Well, we've lost all our games because we can't hit five mana. So if we can hit five mana in our hand, I think we're in a good spot. Opponent plays their land. We go ahead, play our island. We're gonna cycle the turn timber or timberland timberland ancient on their turn go ahead and find ourselves a forest keep go ahead and hit those land drops take a normal or i mean player forest oops uh grab kuro because why not when do you guys get grab your like companions I, i've never know like when it's a good idea when not to uh gosh that is transmogrifying wand kind of spooky okay our opponent here has a right facing me is choosing death 
That, uh, it's gonna be a problem, I think. It would be very hard to stop this Tezzeret from ultimating. We might need to, uh, oh, get lucky. Cast Moti. Hopefully ramp. Opponent has a pretty good answer to the fact that we need a Moti to stick on the battlefield. They have removal for three turns here with the Trim Transmogrifying Wand. And that is about as bad as it could get. I like how I said we need to get lucky and then we proceed to get the worst possible luck. We get Drew to the Emerald Grove and it puts two lands in our hand. So we can't even recast a commander this turn, nor can we cast any of our other spells in our hand besides Drown the Behemoth. Opponent gets to ultimate their Tezzeret, so that means every time they tip over one of their artifacts, they go ahead and, well, draw a card. Okay. We might cast this Drownyard Behemoth on our opponent's turn here, just to, uh... Hopefully get some action going. Opponent. Six mana open. Okay, well. Shoot me in the foot. We have two Phyrexian Praetors onto the battlefield. We reduce our opponent's life total a lot here, making it hard for them to uh, actually go ahead and cast a ton off their library, library, which is nice. I think next turn we might just cast our turn Timber Symbiosis and go for the big stuffs. Opponent needs to get rid of the Zopendril, otherwise we're going to kill, kill them here. They do have the Transmogrifying Wand, though. They need to also get rid of the Jin Gatactius. Otherwise, any artifact they cast is going to get countered. But they probably have a ton in hand because of uh, this cares about the number of artifacts. The opponent does go for the Jin. So this means we do have an opportunity here to potentially go for lethal. The opponent can't play a bunch of spells off the top of their library. We're just trying to create a creature. Opponent. That was an interesting play by our opponent. I don't know what exactly they were thinking would happen, or maybe they just meant to submit something else. I have zero. So we just need a way to remove, remove that thought monitor. Oh my goodness, good game. That's gotta be a good game. That, uh... That's, uh... 14, 14 Trample. They have one mana open here, so they can bounce something, but they're still gonna take a bunch of damage from the other creatures. Okay, okay, Zimone and Dina as a matchup. This is going to be interesting. This hand leaves things to be desired, but it is three lander and we have Mirror Shell Crab. We do not go first, though. That is raw. Alright, well, we have action on three. 
We drew into our two of our four drops. We just need to draw into a fourth land. How hard is it to draw land? Alice Blood Mage, not bad. Opponent probably trying to play around counter spells. Lo and behold, we can't seem to draw anything. So. Oh, I got my wish of drawing into a land, but uh, doesn't help its tap. Okay, opponent, it's just a mere shell crap. Play out one thing you don't care about, and it will be okay. We managed to counter our opponent's spell here, and we can play out Guaranteed Ramp. We're playing out the guaranteed ramp. I'm not having this druid of Emerald Grove go. You're going to get a one, a nat one. I mean, it could nat 20 and it would be great, but you know what? This is straight up a nat 20 without having to roll it. Comes with a little less creature attached to it, but. Hey. Go ahead, get our Cascade on here, giving us Solemn Simulacrum. That was kind of a known card that we're going to be receiving. We can ramp one more with a Solemn. And uh, we get to take off two counters from our Rick and the Thieves. You don't have to take off the counter, so if it's gonna, turning into a creature becomes a problem, you can go ahead and choose to uh, keep it as a land and just not remove the last counter. But I'm just trying to lower the number of counters, at least, so that we can uh, and potentially survive. That was uh, that was to be expected. Opponent with a black deck here is going to be playing a lot of removal. We do have how much mana now? I don't actually have that much mana. We have seven mana. Enough to cast one of these things. Atiova, that's huge. Opponent's getting up there in mana as well. Toma is pretty big. This doesn't do anything if we cast it, so maybe we want to do a little ramping beforehand. Right, we're gonna go ahead and play out the druid here. We're just gonna try and get a bit more uh, lands down so we can play Modi and maybe also do something else at the same turn. We could also potentially just uh, low roll every turn. That's not not a problem. There's, there's no problem with this, as far as I'm aware. Everything is going as intended. Opponent, though, I don't think is actually going to uh, try and. Uh, oh, they're going to let us draw a card. Sweet. How kind of them. That is a little upsetting that now we have to discard, but that is of my own fault. Eh, we don't really need Spring to Mine. We have enough lands. All right. <clears throat> Next turn, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine lands. So nine mana to pa play a portal to Frixia. Please, no more creatures. Opponent is going to be sifting through their deck. I do appreciate that they have the Simone and Dino sleeves. Very respectable. Gotta match it all up, you know? If they don't have Dina in the deck, I'll be kind of sad. Okay. This is where I draw the line for what is acceptable. 
We actually have 10 mana. Because, yeah, that's nine. We have one mana left over. Well, we could counter it. I have mana open. Could also play this sacrifice something and cascade. But this also could get countered. You know what? Let's go for it. It's not going to cascade into anything as far as I'm aware. Yep. Klein. I just realized I'm not very loud in this video, am I? All right. Mockery of nature. Sacrifice a creature. Submit. No. Oh, that's three mana. All right. So we can do this if we sacrifice the Druid of Emerald Grove. Hey, what? I guess we'll pick up Karuga. Uh, I think we just passed Darren. Okay, well, if Modi survives, we have big things to go for, but uh, I don't think we're going to be living. Okay, I'm not entirely sure our opponent realized that they could have just likely killed us there with um, making us draw a bunch of cards with the fairy mastermind, but I will take this opportunity to see what we can do. We will go ahead and play out Portal of Rexia and just call it a day. That doesn't seem very impressive. Mockery of nature requires four mana. We could play out what gives us the greatest odds of winning here. So six drop plus this four drop. So God Pharaoh statue cascade. Well, it's not a four drop. It's a nine drop, but you get the idea. No, 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 no. Why did you do this game? Why did you do this? It, it does this occasionally. It does this occasionally. Where it's like, oh, no, you didn't want to play the game. You just simply wanted to stare at the freaking board. Guess what? We're not going to show you your Cascade card. Because why would we? See, what it does here is it hides it right here where it's so inconvenient. You have to click on the spell. You can't click resolve because if you click resolve, you lose the game because you don't get your stupid spell. We missed one spell here that may have been the difference between us losing the game and winning the game. We're just going to slam the portal at this point. There's nothing worse that could happen. You have to see, pay attention to clicking this. We will not fail. We're not turning it out of the land because we don't want to uh, go ahead and run into any big problems.
Okay, we have managed to uh, do some damage to our opponent here. Oh my goodness, that free card mist is going to actually irritate me. Mana value three or less, they can go ahead and return their fairy master weapon. Thankfully for us, we now actually have a boatload of mana. We have even more if we go ahead and do this. We can go ahead, play this, and hopefully cascade some more. Do we emerge it? We probably emerge it here for three. Sacrifice the Griff. Do not click that resolve. It is not your friend. It never will be. It's rude. It's hateful. Mean. Not taking the counter off of Rishmathes. We still have mana to play. Uh, something else big. We need to cast something pretty large. All right, we'll play out this because it's probably our best bet. Coming back here in post, I think I missed a winning line. Instead of emerging the decimator off the flyer, I should have used the Titan to sack it to the emerge cost. And then the decimator would come down and it would pump our flyer as well as our other creatures, giving them plus two, plus two and trample. And then instead of casting Coma here, we cast as a Pandrel, and then we would have had these massive tramplers that we could swing in with during our attack phase and probably win the game from there. Timberland Ancient, that is not gonna do it. That's not gonna hit anything. Uh, decline. Decline. And I guess we can go ahead and cycle this. No, actually, we're not going to cycle it because I don't really want to die. All right. We're not going to be able to kill our opponent here, so we can go ahead and pack in two here. Not gonna try and draw any cards here. Oh shoot. Uh full control here. Actually, I'm gonna have to wait. Don't let the opponent know that they can kill us with his fairy mastermind. I will have to respond to its activation with coma. But if I activate coma in response, they can start activating it because it's instant speed. They just need to make us draw five cards, so they need 20 mana, which I think they have 20 mana. They have five lands plus five lands plus four or six. So they don't have quite have 20 mana, so they can't make us draw enough cards, but they need to make us draw just a few more cards to... Uh... Okay, so we can stop them from making us draw a card. No, that's still not good enough. We're going to die to the... So I have to activate it after one more draw, I think. I think I screwed this up. Should have done it the, the one prior. Because I can just do it this in response. I think they could have always done it in response. So I think we were just dead regardless. I don't know.
We have another way to make us draw a card. We can flash this in on our turn. And we need it to hit a very specific card. We don't have any instant speed removal. Do not tell our opponent this. If we can survive this upkeep, this is going to be the most clutch or the worst card ever. Done. Oh, we can gain life maybe. Our opponent's go trigger goes on the stack first. All right, so we'll get Tatiova, I think, is our best option here. No, Tatiova is going to kill us. Hmm. Wait, my graveyard. None of these things are good. Uh, go ahead, sacrifice this, maybe? No, just, uh, we'll sacrifice this. Commit, auto pay, cascade, resolve. Uh, no, 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 no. Done. Okay, resolve. That's a. Uh, that's a. Uh, that's it. Come on, we have no way to gain any life here. Uh, cycle. Resolve. Uh. Cycle. more cards I'm so disappointed by that flash emerge card if we could have cascaded into planar celebration or Karn's temporal sundering or rivers review there is a numerous cards that that card could have cascaded into that would have won us the game there, but we just cascaded into a draw card. All right, our next game did not go so well. We missed a land drop drawing into the worm coil. We had a pass turn. Next turn, we draw into a tap land. Our opponent also just curved out really well. Ran into Z Zorel. Roxa and Kunaroos. All right, all right. That is intimidating if they find their combo cards. If four cycling, I'm gonna go ahead and try and keep this hand. Knowing my luck, it is the worst keep imaginable. We're gonna top deck into zero lands. Oh. That's uh, spooky. Fast mana. It's fast. <clears throat> Uh, 
That's uh, that's also very spooky. My opponent is hitting well. Oh wait, I just realized they're Crocs the deck, so of course they're drawing and discarding a ton. That seems like a bad idea to put that in my hand. But it needs one more land on the battlefield to go ahead and cast their Crocs and Kunaros and get back some creature. So we can also just commit their Crocs and Kunaros to the top of their library. That will buy us a turn. That was bad. What's worse would be if Crocs and Kunaros resolves. So we're going to try and stop that. That is a big dino. We're going to go ahead and hopefully stop ourselves from getting blown out here. All right, Cascade, Ricksmithies. That means Nick Bloon Ancient could come down next turn. We have seven mana, we're gonna have eight mana. We can also play something else potentially. We might just play the Nick's Bloom Ancient, hope it survives and uh, give it a turn. Unfortunately, they're going to be able to go ahead and attack in with this dino. Oh, nice. Didn't realize they were about to uh, get a bunch of fairies. Now that's just game now, isn't it? All right, we're going to have to hit real good off of this. By real good, I mean like extra turn real good. Or bounce, mass bounce. Hmm. All right, that was not our extra turn spell. We have one more chance. And we don't hit the extra turn spell. Take action. Find ourselves a green. Take action. In control of it. Take action. Get that. I guess we take our Karuga and hope our opponent does not attack in. Hopefully our opponent does not know how to count and we stand a chance. Please, opponent. Don't count. Opponent, stop counting, please. Just give us a turn. You're going to love it. Come on now. All right, we're going Moti versus Atali. Now this is kind of an interesting matchup for us because well, our opponent can cast our large spells off the top of our library, which is not what we want. Oh no, I was really gonna tell myself I was gonna mulligan for fast mana here, but this hand is kind of good. But if our opponent ramps up and casts Atali, we might just be dead. All right, well, this is gonna be a very awkward game. opponent needs to somehow draw worse than us which is not something that usually happens we have five lands here so we just need to survive for five turns
That is not ramp. Come on, find us a ramp spell. Ever so kindly find us. Okay, well, at this point, it doesn't really matter. Not a ramp spell. Hmm. Opponents got three mana. I think we ended up going first, didn't we? So they're catching up. I don't like it. Come on, opponent. You can figure out how to ramp. There you go. Not too hard, is it? Oh, fuck me. Why don't you? Okay, you're a little late to the party, Rixmas East, but much appreciated. Okay, well, we're going to need them to hit bad. Hit bad, opponent. Hit bad. Oh, wait, you don't have two red. Thank goodness. Good riddance. Okay, less good, less good. <clears throat> okay, okay. This is going to cast one blue. So we need to hold up a blue if we can. That is... A little absurd. That's not what we want to do. That's more like it. Alright, cascade into a creature maybe? No, I don't even think we'll have enough mana then. Well, this is pretty good, but... Come on, two lands, get lucky. Alright, I needed some serious luck here. Okay, that is... That is serious enough luck for us to stand for a little bit i was gonna get a free seven drop off the top of our library so let's just hope it's not like portal of phyrexia okay it's just greater tanuki oh my goodness it's just greater tanuki we lived to tell the story thank goodness my gosh oh goodness gracious Sure, get in. What I, have, I, don't, I don't care. The amount that I care is minute at the moment. Well, that's a pretty good spell, isn't it? I think we're going to go ahead and start by casting this. Blow up there is a pendrel. I guess they could make it indestructible, but they didn't. Frozen Tusker, that is a 7 mana card, so we can do get to Cascade off of that. We get a bunch of more lands, I do like that. Alright. What is it going to be? What is it going to be? Oh, it was the extra turn spell. It was the extra turn spell. I needed this after this. I've been recording for uh, like 2 hours now, because I just I felt like we hadn't gotten the game. That really shows off this deck, and I think our opponent will stick through for this one, which is... Kind of nice. It means we get a chance to demonstrate how glorious this deck is. I think that's going to... Nope, that worked. All right. We get a one mana, nine mana cascade into a Dreamstone Hedron into Nissa. Nissa? Saw him. All right, I'll take it. Nice, we don't have to resolve the Eryximathes triggers anymore. We'll go ahead and take a green. Just in case we do hit Anissa eventually. We have three mana to go ahead and put Karuga into our hand. We get another turn here. No attacks. We will go ahead and play Forest, I think. We'll play... Why not? A, a Coma seems pretty good. Cascade into... Clear cutter. All right, we'll play the six cost clear cutter because why not? Nissa, come on, Nissa. I should double up our mana here pretty good. Oh my goodness! No way we get the combo off. All right, this is my favorite part. One, two, three, four, proliferate. All right, what do we get? 
page son that's going on green do you know what's gonna about to happen my favorite thing it is my favorite thing uh green not bad black this cliff rate cliff rate cliff rate cliff rate oh you know what what works really well with doubling up your your green mana is tutoring up all your forest uh, we don't actually have that many forests left my bad probably should have just gone for the untapped but hey this looks really cool because now we have a bunch of mana from that you can play out turn timber symbiosis why not you know a little extra mana here Rishkar's expertise draw 12 or 13 cards because we have the Eryxmathies. Oh my god, I'm so glad that our opponent's sticking in and that we got this game. I'm glad I didn't stop recording until now. Cascade, we have nothing left to cascade into. Draw 13 cards, put a 5 mana spell onto the battlefield, or cast it for free. You know what? I want to draw more cards, alright? Karuga. Hopefully we don't draw our library. Sure. Uh, Titan of Industry, why not? We'll gain a little life, probably. Uh, shield counter might be good to go on to this. And uh, why not attack in with this real quick to uh, go ahead and get rid of uh, Greater Tanuki is uh, probably the second biggest threat. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to do a little bit of discarding, but it, it will be fine. Uh, land, 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 cat, or pretty crappy creature, pretty crappy creature. Actually, this one's not bad. Tap land, uh, tap land, cultivator classes we don't really need. And maybe a land. But we need to submit. Oh, seven. Whoops. Oh, no. They're just going to go for it, aren't they? I forgot the full control at their upkeep. Because we could have stopped them from flipping their Atali here. But we can still tap it. So they can't attack in with it. Because we have Coma. So it's gonna flip here, I think. Wait, cancel. No, it, it yeah, it was it's fine, it's fine. Because it doesn't exile. So it's not gonna come back. We didn't remove their Atali because we didn't want them to uh go ahead and uh cast it again because we have such why did I keep oh wait, it said select cards to discard. <laughs> I discarded all the good cards, I kept all the bad cards. That's, uh, that's embarrassing. All right, all right. That is 7 Drop Tribal. I hope you enjoyed the deck. If you did, consider subscribing to see more uh, fun gameplay here on the channel. We try and do interesting decks. Uh, usually we're playing standard, though. But uh, this deck, it performed all right today. We had some tough matches, and I think, you know, there's arguments to be made for, well, changes to the deck. Obviously, the uh, the curve is it could use a little bit of improvement. Maybe it seems pretty good to me. Honestly, if you wanted to go even harder into the combo, I'd cut Mind's Eye and maybe maybe like Solemn Simulacrum or Druid. Pick one of those two. Then you're more guaranteed to hit your time warp. So you resolve a Moti. The next turn you play a six drop that cascades into a time warp. You win the game. Currently, your odds for hitting a time warp whenever you play a modi though is not that high. Or sorry, whenever you play a spell after casting a modi is not that high because you're going to be maybe down to, well, five cards below six mana value. So you have 20% chance of getting that free turn to go ahead and set up and cast even more expensive spells and cascade into more things. If you can get that time warp off though, it is huge. Another huge card is Karn's Temporal Sundering. It is a six mana extra turn spell, and then we also get to return something. So this is another way, just take an extra turn so your creatures don't have summoning sickness, and then all those big bodies that you've been holding up can then go ahead and swing in and finish off your opponent. If you enjoyed this video, perhaps you'll enjoy the video that we did yesterday. Well, maybe not yesterday, 
previously we played a deck built all around reanimating in Naya, which was also had a lot of these crazy cards. Honestly, we had, uh, well, the world spell, we had the portal to Phyrexia, and we also had Titan of Industry. Anyways, that's going to do it for today. Have a nice morning, evening, night, afternoon, wherever and whenever you're watching. Ciao.